Hello and welcome to the program. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for joining us. This is Moneyline with Nancy, and I am Nancy Naji. It's so nice to be here uh, today. We will uh, get started with uh, the program, and we, are to we will be talking about Nigeria's mining sector. Just a few days ago, the Minister of Solid Minerals, uh, Dele Alake, did unveil a seven-point agenda. Why is Nigeria such a country that is richly blessed with so many mineral resources, natural resources, yet for the mining sector it contributes less than 1% to GDP? Uh, the minister has come forward to say that this is a sector that can contribute about 50% to Nigeria's economy. Is that too optimistic? Uh, what are the policies and the regulations that are needed uh, in that uh, sector? He also came out a few days ago to say that the federal government would establish a solid minerals corporation that will, in turn, uh, work with uh, multinationals uh, abroad as well as bringing investment into the country. Joining me now to... Uh, Look at this issue is Cyril Azobubu is the partner and mining leader at Price Waterhouse Coopers. He joins us virtually. Good morning, Mr. Azobu, and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Nancy. It's so great to uh, be with you on this program. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, let's get started. And let me start by asking the question uh, uh, which I mentioned earlier. Why is Nigeria such a blessed country in mineral resources, yet we are not getting the benefits from uh, these resources. There are many countries in Africa, such as Namibia, South Africa, even Ghana, that are blessed with mineral resources and are harnessing, you know, more than Nigeria is doing. Why are we having that contradiction? Well, I don't know whether minerals would be, you know, much of a blessing to us um, because of the way we've actually handled them over the years. Um, Yes, in the 70s, 60s and 70s, up to the early 80s, Nigeria was really big on mining. Um, uh, it was about 5 to 45 percent of their about contribution to our GDP. And we're major exporters of tin um, um, across the globe. And we did have a very good um, you know, focus on mining. And then oil, oil came, oil and gas came, and then we neglected the sector. And I think it's been an issue of neglect over the years um, because um, and because, you know, um, there hasn't been much attention to it. Um, we have we actually have ourselves where we are today. And, and so um, the industry is actually richly endowed, like you said, but it also depends on how serious the government is to ensure that enough uh, attention is given to the sector such that we can actually in, in, uh, uh, extract the value that is actually embedded in our mining space. Mr. Zobu, do, do you now think that um, we're, we're getting that much desired attention right now with uh, the appointment of Dele Alaki as the Minister of Solid uh, Minerals Resources? I think it's a journey. Uh, I personally have followed the industry over the last 12 years, um, thereabouts. Um, and what I have seen is uh, a, a slight growth over the years. And I think since the coming of the um, Mohammed Buhari administration in 2015, there was renewed hope, you know, that there would be, you know, development in the sector. And we've seen, you know, gradual improvement over the years in terms of policy, engaging with the industry players. And um, we actually did put out a leadership material just to show progress that has been made, but it's still far. Um, what I've seen from um, the agenda that the current minister, the Honorable Minister Dele Alake has put up is quite inspiring, though. Um, and I think it just seeks to build on some of the successes that have been made by the previous administration. Um, we are not there, you know, um, having said that, and it's still a long way to go. Um, in 2016, there was a roadmap that was... Um, you know, developed, and that was to build on a 20, a prior roadmap, which was, you know, um, launched in 2012. That roadmap in 2012 actually looked at a contribution of 5% to GDP uh, from the mining sector. But that was kind of ambitious uh, because um, given the 2016 roadmap, there was a moderation of that expectation to 3%. And that is expected by 2025. Um, as of today, um, we see that the current contribution to GDP is just barely 0 0.1, you know, 7, 0.2 percent. 
and it's still a far cry from the expectation. So uh, I, I think that it would take a lot in spite of the efforts that have happened over the last you know, um, eight years. It will still take a lot to move the needle and bring Nigeria to where it should be in the league of miners uh, communities across the globe. Now, let's talk about uh, Deli Alake's seven-point agenda, which he uh, unveiled just a few uh, days ago. You said from your own words that it's quite inspiring. Uh, what precisely within that seven-point agenda is inspiring? And what do you see perhaps as ambitious in that agenda? Uh, we have that seven-point agenda, so I would implore uh, my uh, team to put it on air. Of course, it contains about 30, uh, 30 days uh, grace to illegal miners to join Miners Cooperative, as you can uh, see uh, there, uh, to set up Nigeria Solid Minerals Corporation, joint ventures with mining multinationals, uh, big data on specific seven priority minerals and their deposits, mine surveillance tax force and the mine police, comprehensive review of mining licenses, that is of all the mining licenses uh, in the country, then establishment of six mineral processing centers. Okay, so Mr. Azobo, which, which uh, of these um, items are most inspiring for you? I think, first of all, the commitment, you know, and the coming out to even address the nation and come up with an agenda for me is inspiring. And that speaks to that commitment. Reading that, um, you know, agenda and the, 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 uh, the speech, you know, gives a lot of positive vibes in terms of the commitment of this administration to mining generally. Um, but having said that, when you look at those seven point agenda, they are not entirely new. These are things that we've always talked about. In fact, the previous administration has, you know, done, there, there's been a lot of things done in, in this regard. You know, if we take them one after the other, um, you you would, you know, you, you probably would then understand in greater detail, you know, what my, what, what I really think in terms of what those items really are and where we're at in um, implementing some of the initiatives around those agenda items. Uh, if I recall very well, as you showed on the slide, the first one really is about automation, uh, automaton to illegal miners. You, you understand that over the years, the, the industry has been fraught with a lot of illegal mining. Um, when I read the speech, it tended to address, you know, um, 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 small scale miners or artisanal miners, um, uh, so to speak, um, which was actually, a, you know, a conception of or a construction of um, you know, illegal miners who, who would be, who would, you would mainly consider as, you know, poor farmers and traders who just go out there and, and you know, um, mine and source for this as part of, um, you know, that daily living. And so organizing them and formalizing them and then labeling them as artisanal miners is one initiative government has taken over the years. And I see that what the minister is saying is to give them a 30-day ultimatum to achieve that um, coming on to the mainstream of being formalized. But my, my view here is that illegal mining is more than artisanal mining or this small scale or this poor, you know, miners. There's a lot more about illegal mining. And I think that is where the problem really is. And there are cartels that we see and we read on a regular basis that that would mine uh you know without the right license and then cut away these things um these minerals uh, out of the country um i mean a, a typical case for example is you even where you have a license um to you know to mine a particular lease area and you have a mine license to mine a particular mineral um by the time you start mining things that do not fall within that license you are an illegal miner if you have an exploration license um, which really gives you uh, the the right to explore for. And in, even in the process of exploring for minerals, yes, there are samples that you take and you can tell. However, when you continue to mine with an exploration license without going for you know, a proper mining license, you are actually an illegal miner. So it goes beyond these artisanal and, and you know, the, the small you know, poor, you know, farmers and traders, it goes beyond that. Illegal mining actually does happen based on what we read and what we see on the large scale. And though some of them would be aided by these artisanal miners, but then there's still that, you know, lot, lot, lot of work that needs to be done beyond, you know, formalizing you know, these artisanal miners or these other, quote, illegal miners into 
you know, small scale miners. So thus, those are my thoughts. And I think that the, the initiative should address the bigger, you know, um, issues around uh, um, illegal mining generally beyond, you know, um, the artisanal uh, miners. The other thing that was mentioned in that um, uh, um, 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 slide, you know, agenda. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, you want me to speak to, to each of them, uh, yes. or I just pick up a few of them. Yes. No, no, just, just you can speak to a few of them if you want to. Let me get yeah. your insight. So some right? of them before I. Yeah. Yeah, so let me just pick a few of the things that are actually in, 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 you know, in the pipeline. And so there are actually mineral processing centers that are actually being set up by the past administration. And a lot of work is still going on in that, um, in that realm um, to achieve, you know, some traction. So there are six geopolitical zones in which you've set up mineral uh, processing clusters. Um, Ledzim, for example, in Mboyin State, Berite in Cross River State, Kaolin processing in Bauchi State, Gold Ore in Kogi State, Jewelry Center in Oyo State, the Gold Souk in Kanu State. So these are actually in the works. And I recognize those efforts. And I want to believe that what the, what the current minister is doing is actually strengthening those processing centers and then find opportunity to gain traction and um, see what more value that can be uh, derived from those processing centers. So I, I think the big thing for me here is the is the issue around data. I recognize there's been a whole lot of work that the previous administration has you know, embarked on and has also recognized in the speech by the Honorable Minister uh, around data. So the Nigeria Integrated Exploration Mine uh, 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 Initiative, the NIMEP program or Mining Exploration Initial Pro Program, you know, was designed such that there would be beyond the aerial mapping of the Nigerian geological terrain uh, is to also give clarity as to the location of minerals in different parts of the country. Um, even recently, there was a, I mean, a recent you know, improved airborne you know, data uh, um, survey, which provides higher resolution. But I reckon that what the minister is saying here is very important. And this is what investors have been talking about over time. This one inspires me to the extent that we can be crisp, we can be specific, we can address the specific minerals that are critical, right, that the investors are actually looking out for and gather sufficient data, which is bankable. And I think that for me is quite good. But what we also need to look out for is what are investors really looking out for. Uh, and the seven um, um, strategic minerals as, as in, uh, entrenched in the 2016 um, roadmap, you know, um, gold, barite, iron ore, and all of that as listed in those, you know, roadmap, you know, they, they are quite good I mean, to look at. But the question is, Today, we need to look beyond those strategic minerals. We need to look at minerals of the, of the future. And these are critical minerals. And as, you know, a thought leadership we put out there, out there, you know, very recently as to what the global miners are looking at, you know, majority of them think that, you know, uh, minerals of the future, critical minerals, green minerals are key to the operation. So if they continue in their current trajectory, they are not likely to survive in 10 years. And so many of them are looking at, you know, uh, green metals or green minerals that support things like battery production. So you look at lithium, uh, um, um, you're looking at um, 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 nickel, you're looking at tin, you know, you're looking at some of these minerals, which we have. And we've seen inquiries and we've seen a lot of investors come in here. And so what government needs to th think about is beyond these strategic minerals that we're flying in the, in the roadmap, what are the critical minerals that the world is actually looking for? How can we announce the opportunities that are bound in this space? And also beyond just extraction and exportation, which some of these investors are looking for just to get the minerals and then take them offshore or take them back to their countries and process. We should then look to how do we then use this opportunity to develop you know, processing and um, refining and beyond that, even processing manufacturing sites for um for these minerals so the use of this mineral so for example we should be looking at using the the uh the uh, the quantum of reserves that we have say based on in, in lithium and some of these associated battery related minerals we can then ask 
you know, companies, investors to come in and then create battery factories. And, and then we, we get more of the benefit than just looking at the, um, the upstream side of things of extraction and perhaps exportation. So value addition is key um, beyond even the mineral processing centers. For the critical minerals, it's important that we promote va value addition. And I think that matter on big data, on specific, you know, those, um, those specific minerals is quite important. A lot of work, like I said, has been done on data gathering, but then looking beyond the, you know, the locations where they are and giving more bankable of, uh, you know, data for investment purposes, you know, becomes very real when you consider the kind of minerals they are looking out for. Okay. In terms of the mines, police and tax force, um, you know, for, you know, to tackle illegal mining, I think that that is good, but there is one big thing that needs to be addressed in the sector. And that for me is security. Um, no investor or no foreign direct investment will come to a nation where the prospective in in investors do not feel safe, and particularly where they think the operations will not be safe. And so issues around security, particularly around mining sites, need to be addressed. And so if we do not tackle that headlong along with tackling illegal mining, of course, some of those illegal, some of those security issues uh, would be around some of this illegal mining and all of that. But I think we need to take the two at the same time while we're tackling illegal mining. We're also tackling issues around security to provide that comfort and confidence for a prospective investors that coming into the Nigerian space is safe for them to come and bring in their investment. So just a few that I needed to talk about. And, and then just but before I, I, I conclude on that, I think there's, there's that, you know, uh, thoughts around, you know, providing um, or, or creating a Nigerian solid minerals uh, corporation. Um, yes, I, I, I think that's good. But I also am aware that there is an existing um, Nigeria Mining Corporation um, set up then by the 1972 Act and also in the um, um, the current um, you know uh, Mining Act of, of of 1990. And then we know that there is a Nigerian Mining Corporation that had been set up. So my question here really is, what happens to the already existing Nigerian Mining Corporation? Is it going to be a new one? I know that BP at some point you know looked to privatize this, and and part of the Things I picked up from the minister's um, honourable minister's speech was that we, we don't want to make the same mistake that we find in the petroleum you know industry over the years. And, and I'm wondering to myself. So yes, it is good to have a vehicle upon which you know there can be partnerships and ventures, joint ventures with multinationals. But then again, the question we want to ask ourselves is why did we have a problem, or why do we think we had a problem with the oil and gas sector? You know, why are the joint ventures, the JVs with the Martin at the IOCs, why are they not succeeding? Why are the IOCs divesting? And why is it that, um, you know, government has had not been able to meet its own funding requirements for some of these JVs? So we're thinking about issues around restiveness in that oil region. We're thinking about issues around security. We're thinking about issues around funding from the government. So if you're going to form in, in, in a, a, a corporation for solid minerals, how do we address? I know there is something around funding. There's a fund that is being set up, and that fund is to promote, you know, uh, investment social, from the... Uh, is it the Solid Minerals uh, Development Fund? Is that what you're talking about? That one? But there is an existing Solid Minerals Development, development Fund. fund but yes. part of, yeah, but part of the JVs, right, okay. with the, that is being talked about is to have a fund, fund. you know, and, and and really and, and I, I I I that's one of the things that gets me excited and I just wish we could find a very articulated way of addressing that. And mm -hmm. and then that is the fact that the mining value chain, particularly at the early stage, is risky, right? And um, banks would not fund exploration. No yeah. bank would fund exploration because the risk is high. And that is the problem that we're having in the sector. So where so will you funding need... for exploration come if I may come in here? Where should funding well, for less exploration come? And what should also be the uh, input of states, as it were? Mm -hmm. uh, because there is that uh, uh, issue about exclusive and concurrent lists, as, as it yes. were. You see what we have even in the oil sector. But here in the country, of course, we, we saw, we've seen in the past 
uh, even some people are still dissatisfied about what's happening in Zafara. Okay, the gold for in Zafara found illegally mined in Zafara is for Zafara. It's not for whole Nigeria, but oil in the Niger Delta is for everyone. So how do we sort out that dichotomy of exclusive slash uh, concurrence? What should also be the participation of states in this, as well as that other question around where can we get the funds for exploration? As ambitious as and inspiring as a, a minister's a seven-point agenda is, where is it going to get the money <laughs> for exploration? In, interesting question. Now, there are a lot of questions here, yeah. and let me take them one after the other, the exclusive, the concurrent, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think over the years, there's, there's, I, I am seeing a bit of understanding between the states and the federal government as to ownership and how the states can participate. We've seen some states have set up, you know, their own um, corporations or their own, um, you know, investment companies by which they have partnership with private players to buy or invest in certain minerals. And, you know, that for me is participatory and makes a lot of sense. So states can actually collaborate. States can actually go into partnership or alliances with private companies, you know, setting up their own companies, you know, uh, mining companies. And then with that, use as vehicle to partner with um, other, um, uh, uh, um, to, to partner with private investors. So that is working. I've seen quite a lot of good initiatives coming out of the likes of Kaduna State and some of the states here in the North and in other places within the nation. So we've seen good traction. So states can participate. And I think the other area about, you know, um, issues that I see, the tensions that happens between states and federal government is around, so it is around revenue. So I think, first of all, states should be more concerned about bringing investment into their states. And so make your state more attractive. And so things around collaboration in ensuring security, a safe, you know, uh, environment within the place so that investors will come and invest. So invest if investors invest in a particular state, the setup they have employee, all of the employee taxes would go to the state. So states can actually have opportunity to get. Of course, there are other you know taxes, although that becomes an issue because again, multiplicity of taxes becomes a problem for uh, investors in the mining space, even generally across the economy, you know, invest I mean, in various uh, aspects of, of, of the economy. And so uh, states can actually promote, you know, good practices. But the other part of it is um, the issue around derivation. Um, and, and I think one area around data, I mean, we, we, I did hear about big data, which is good from a geological perspective. But I think it's important to also ensure that production data output is clear. I don't think we've captured enough. I don't think that all that is produced in the Nigerian mining industry or mining space is actually captured. If you look at the NBS statistics, it, I don't think it captures everything. But we still hear things about, again, again part of the legal mining and all of that. The, so the issue is around data capture and the points at which data is captured. So when you when you when you look at the the the, the, the derivation uh, and and what then goes to the state, a lot of the times it's it's misinterpreted because again, what goes to the state should be based on what is mined from the state. The question is, what data are we then using to arrive at that derivation? And so some states would say that um, you have you have captured production data at the company level, but that company level capture does not reflect the state from which it is captured. And so the capture of data and ensuring that data reflects the lesson, a very great degree of accuracy at the state level is important. So the collaboration that needs to exist between states and the, 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 the states and the federal government is key across a number of you know areas across a number of uh, you know initiatives including uh, um, uh, monitoring including um, you know ensuring there is safe you know uh, environment for miners and also in terms of the levies and taxes that the miners are exposed to yes right the, the mining act requires that even when you get your license before you before you even get your license you need to have the permission of the communities host community engagement is important and you need also to make sure that you address the issues and needs you know but then a lot of these levies and taxes that are not coordinated 
that are not, you know, giving the miners the opportunity to, you know, to find the the, the freedom to to ex to 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 operate in a, in a given area in a given community is really lacking in some cases. In fact, we've seen cases where even some miners are complaining that they are they are unnecessarily harassed at the state level, and so I, I think that there is enough that can go around as we look at this small you know pie i mean it's it looks small but we can bake a, bake a bigger pie and such that everybody gains at the end of the day so states would they would do you know uh, would, would, would actually get value when they work closely with the federal government and find synergies and then see how they can gain benefit by setting up their own companies and buying licenses such that they can partner with investors, attract investors into their own states, and then take the opportunities that they abound in the mining space in their various states. Okay, um, you talked about, uh, you talked earlier about mineral, uh, minerals for the future. Uh, minerals for the future that include like lithium, manganese, cobalt, and platinum group metals. Uh, is Nigeria yes? Is like Nigeria really blessed in large quantities in these minerals compared to the strategic minerals which we are uh, heated to uh, invested in minerals such as gold, lead, zinc, iron ore, bitumen, limestone, which the minister also mentioned a few days ago. So I don't know. For me, I didn't. I don't know if I missed it, but I did not hear him talking about green minerals, as it were, because to meet global demand, there was a report I read some time ago, uh, Global Mining Outlook or something. I can't remember where I, where I stumbled on that report, and in that report, it was mentioned that about 400 new mines are needed to meet global demand. Talking about green minerals. So from this strategy, which the minister is putting together. I'm not getting a hang of that. And if indeed we are blessed with green minerals. Then number two is bitumen. I would like you to explain as an expert in this sector. Can bitumen be categorized under the, this ministry? And I know we'll come to the steel development. <laughs> we'll come to steel development in, 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 later. I see you are smiling. It's like, you know where I'm going to. Uh, because I know that bitumen under room temperature uh, Bitumen is it a metal under no, it's liquid under room temperature, you know. So help me answer that, please. Okay, thank you. So let me stop first about the minerals of the future. Yes, you're absolutely correct. The the world is looking out for uh, green minerals, and 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 there are you know I indications. In fact, a lot of investors, well, a few investors have actually come to the country asking about these, um, making inquiries about these minerals. In fact, I remember the last administration. And the, the Honorable Minister then insisted that you cannot just take these things and take them out. There has to be value addition. So, um, and I think that's the point that I was trying to make earlier in terms of domiciliation of um, a processing plant for things like battery. So we can use our, you know, our minerals to, to the maximum benefit of the country. And so um, things like lithium, lithium before now, it, it, uh, speaking to miners, they say lithium, the things you just find, you know, literally in the place, they were just like, you know, um, uh, um, um, waste, you know, in various mining, some mining sites. But today, lithium is, is really in high demand. And we do have, I, I can't speak to numbers. Again, this is speaking to the, uh, the quantum of data, or the, the, the clarity of data uh, in terms of the accuracy of the, the total deposits mm. that we have of all of these minerals. Right. There's been discoveries of gold, of, of nickel, discoveries around um, 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 uh, cobalt, you know, some of these other manganese. We have all of this. And we, 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 we also then need to then articulate how this needs to then fit in as strategic. The question for me is, what is strategic? What should be strategic should be what makes sense, sense. in today's yeah. constant yeah. and context and in terms of making that maximum impact. If you want to achieve your quantum leap, you know, in the in in the boosting of the economy, you need to be be, be very you know clinical as to how you define what is strategic. Question one would ask is 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 coal still strategic because it's part of the strategic minerals? How strategic is it? Right? What does it meet in in the in the direction the trajectory that the world is going? Yes, there's decarbonization and all of that. How easy it is for you to invest in it because we have unlike other countries where they've invested heavily, 
you know, we haven't invested much, right? And so the question, do we want to then start building on coal? Do we, do, to what extent does the world need our mm -hmm. iron ore, for example? Yes, we need iron ore for industrialization, for steel production. It's very critical for me. This is one big game changer for the country when it comes to industrialization. Yet it's key. But the question is, Yes, we also think of, of course, the, the steel that will be produced therefrom would be available for exportation, at least within our immediate environment. So that may be strategic. Question is, let's look critically as to what is strategic. And then let's also understand that what is strategic should also be defined as what demand is about. You know, how much of demand we have, you know, of, of these, these minerals. And so that should drive it. And I perhaps think that Maybe putting this as the PG, you know, uh, uh, um, platinum metal groups as one, you know, and then calling it strategic and then having a clear, you know, um, strategy to, you know, or a policy around how we, you know, go about de-risking this, providing quick data so that serious investors can find themselves in the uh, mining space in Nigeria. Now, the other question you asked around bitumen, I mean, I think that's where for me, I, I get a bit confused. So previously it was mines mm -hmm. and steel development. Now we have two mm -hmm. mines and then we have steel development. Sorry, we have solid minerals and steel development. Some would argue, of course, it would say that uh, a bitumen, um, even in some climes, if you go to Alberta, for example, is part is under um, the oil and gas industry. But in our case, we've classified bitumen as part of this ministry. And and one would say, does it then is it that inclusive? where you then use the, the 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 phrase or the term solid minerals and i know that previous administration uh, and the mining you know ministries have actually been clear to say this is ministry of mines and development as opposed to ministry of solid minerals and and that is to ensure that there is inclusiveness in terms of what minerals are actually out in this sector and when i was talking about the new uh, proposed solid minerals um um, corporation, Nigerian Solid Minerals Corporation, we have one which we call Nigerian Mining Corporation. So yes. are we really moving away from the word mining? Should there actually be Ministry of Mines or Ministry of Solid Minerals? Again, that is left for, um, again, it can, it can be whatever you want it to be as long as it's defined and clearly stated. Uh, bitumen would be fluid. Some would say, well, it depends on what temperature, temperature you're looking at. But That's then why again, I said, and room temperature is liquid. But it's it's a fluid, yeah. Said, it yes. won't form part of solids, yeah. Solid, yeah. solid minerals. So perhaps the ministry should be perhaps ministry of minerals development. Who knows? Oh well, I don't know. Min no, min minerals is broad. It's because broad minerals actually. Minerals also include water. Oil. It includes, it, it includes, it includes all those it things. Includes, crude oil and all those include. things. But 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 I think most most countries would use the word mines, mines right? Yes. And uh, yeah. My, well, you, we would call mining, they will refer yeah. to, quote, what we call, you know, solid minerals. But then again, these are nomenclature, as long as it is clear, where what is put, right? And uh, how we go about, you know, setting up policies and um, regulations as to how we exploit these minerals within our sector. What is critical is that we make the maximum use of our resources to better the lot of the economy or the lot of the people. Now let's talk a little bit about the steel, steel development ministry. Uh, because like you mentioned earlier, we used to have the ministry, both ministries together. Now uh, the president has divided uh, into two. What do you think should be the agenda for this uh, new minister of steel uh, development? Because um, uh, when, when he was appointed, what people were actually thinking, okay, Ajokuta still, Ajokuta still, are there other things that could be on the agenda of uh, this minister? And is there, was there really a need, out. was there really a need to even uh, separate it? Is it big well, enough? I, 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 so I'm wondering though, too, it, it was the same question I asked, you know, I asked myself. So it, it the two things, right? And, and I like to see things in positive light. It, it would it would seem to me that that has been defined as a critical sector, you know, within the mining, you know, you know, within the within the economy that government wants to focus on. If government does right, and we're able to get it to the fullest, honestly, um, the the steel development industry is big, is big, and that for me is a key, you know stimulus for industrialization yeah, sure. in our economy. Think of it, all of the steel construction, roadworks, 
um, um, building anything up to steel rods, your your pin, your your um, your clips, your lapel staple pins. Everything flows from this, and there's a huge ecosystem around the steel industry. If you if you if you really get me right, and and, and for me. Uh, what what really drives would drive this right is to have that kind of the big giant there at your hut, and as which has actually been an unfortunate situation over the years. Once you have it done, we've got a whole lot of steel mini or steel, you know rolling plants across the country. Most of them are using either imported billets or they are using uh, scrap metals. And unfortunately, that is a an, a big issue, right? You walk in, in Lagos here, you walk along the roads, the, the manholes for drainages are gone. Some of you, even the rail that is being, um, that we've been constructing rail, you see people are stealing some of the the, the, the screws and knots. They, they very soon, they, even the rails will go. Some some of the bridges, the, the, the handrails are gone. You know, people are, because there is a big industry you know, for still, you know, um, rolling, uh, roll, uh, still meals, right? Mm -hmm. And and the question I ask myself is, why is this so? Because of the lack of the input for steel production. And so if we are able to then leverage the value value chain for our entire, you know, steel, you know, industry, and then create the ancillary support, you know, uh, industries that, you know, relating to that, for me, it's big. And if that is the intention of government and not just the, 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 the intention, but the will to do it right and make it work, then I might say there would be a need. Otherwise, it's just one. And there are a lot of other things that are related to it. Still, development is big. Uh, I'm just hoping that that is the driver. Uh, every other in, you know, reason for me, I find it you know, hard to, to believe. But nevertheless, I think it's big enough big enough if we actually get it right and 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 integrate with the upstream so whilst Niomko, for example that looks after as the as the minister uh, uh, for solid minerals did say that Niomko also they would need to strengthen the the works around the Niomko. but i know that the projects around trying to revive ajakuta straddles back also to uh, Niomko. so even if we get that iron ore company you know set up and then of course we have other you know, uh, um, interest, you know, in the iron uh, or mining, you know, uh, um, um, part of the sector. Yes, even if we have all of that within the solid minerals, right? But there's a handshake that needs to happen. The offtake requirement for steel is huge as well. We've got okay. other companies that actually invested in iron ore. You know, they are also seeking for their offtake. Initial plan was to export. Now they are saying that you have to domicile, you have to process. But all of that can feed into our steel industry and think of it how big and mighty a country would be if we are able to get our steel industry or the steel sector working and working fine. Okay, one last question before you go. What will it take to attract giants like uh, BHP Billiton, Anglo-American, Rio Tintos, those kind of companies into into Nigeria in, in your uh, in your uh, s s journey in this work, have you had companies like this even thinking to come to Nigeria? The Very truth quickly. is that the truth is that the answer is no. Oh. Okay. Um, and I think the way to go about it is um, is to actually encourage junior miners, right? Those junior miners will not be the big ones, but they are the ones that can take risk. These are the ones that can actually invest in exploration okay. and put in, bring in their money without government even coming into play. In fact, what I, should, what I think government should be doing is think more around junior miners because you can't, we can't fund it enough. We can't even if we provide funding, it can't, it can't even meet the needs of that, you know, of that exploration uh, part of the value chain. So you have junior miners who would come. And the good thing is that once you take a project to a to a to feasibility and you know it's clear and you've started production so for example uh, the the segilola gold for example would, could att attract bigger companies right because it's it's shown and proved to be working right okay. if you have other you know 
other mineral processing that actually made some progress, it could attract the bigger one. So start with junior miners, and then you probably then have an opportunity. Once you get the investment climate right, you okay. have an opportunity for the big ones to look inwards. I know I have said last question, but I can't let you go without answering this question. If you understood what the minister meant by this sector contributing 50% to GDP, I struggled with the understanding of that statement when I know that this this sector contributes less than one percent, how will the minister do it? Fifty percent. What do you understand by it, actually? Honestly, I I I think your guess is as good as mine. I don't understand. I wish I was there maybe to ask him. him. But the truth, the, the the to be fair to him is, I read the full speech. It's not there. Mm. Maybe it was a mention, and then journalists Passing. kind of painted it mm. that way because for me, it's certainly not feasible even when you look at the contribution by the you know by other sectors, sectors even yes, agree that, even agree. Yeah, they don't they can't do 50 they're not doing 50 percent mm. you know i mean they are doing very little if you if you look at agriculture you know as a 2022 was at 27 yeah. percent even oil yes oil is doing very yeah, less oil, oil and gas is just six percent yes, right it's not and, up to 10. Uh, and yeah, and then trade is is is, is fifteen percent. So mm. I, I wonder where that would come from. The okay. likes of Ghana. I know he quoted Namibia mm. to be fifty percent, and he quoted some of those other because that's perhaps what all they have. Okay. Nigeria is a diversified economy, and that is where you need to then think about each of these aspects of the economy making their own contribution. So fifty percent, I guess, must have been. Um, I don't think it's 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 realistic. Okay. It's certainly not realistic. Thank you very much, Mr. Sobu, for joining me today. Let's talk again soon. Uh, perhaps when the minister gives us some more perspectives on his agenda, we'll come back and take a look at it again. Thank you very much for your insights this morning. Thank you very much, Nancy. Appreciate the time. All right. Uh, I've been uh, speaking with Cyril Asobu, who is the partner mining leader at Price Waterhouse Coopers. All right. Let's quickly.